What's happening everybody, Steve here, and today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know about the Sync 4 media screen inside of the Ford Edge. Now this is the new Sync 4 system, and it's an update to my last year's video because I forgot navigation and a few other things as well, which I didn't realize until after it was published, but let's dive into it because there's a lot of information you're gonna to need to know. Starting off along the very top, we've got our little car icon that's gonna get us to all of the different vehicle settings. Little hamburger icon that's gonna give us a few more basic settings. We've got our data transfer, so whether or not we've got anything currently going on with the vehicle. So as you can see there, not connected to anything. Our outside temperature, as well as our current time along the top right hand side. So let's start off with the car along the very top left. That's gonna bring us to all of our different sound settings. So you can see along the top there, we've got our treble mid-range bass. I personally find that treble dropped down a little bit and then bass cranked a little bit is going to give us a pretty good sound. So something kind of in and around that is generally pretty good. And back from there, we've got our balance and fade. So we can kind of adjust there if you want the focus and focal point to be on the driver versus just being in the center for more of an immersive experience. There, we've got our speed compensated volume. So as we go faster, slower, whatever the case may be, we can have the vehicle automatically adjust the volume for us. And for the occupancy, is it gonna be for all of the, everybody in the vehicle or is it gonna be just for the driver? And that's gonna be the immersive aspect of the actual audio. Next up, we've got our radio settings. So we've got a few options there. So radio presets, I, or preset rows, I should say, I do recommend just maxing it out at our six available preset rows and then our radio text. And that is, if we go up, and let's go to our radio. So our radio text, as this loads up, is going to be the information there versus we've got all of our presets now so we can swipe up and 30 individual presets. And as you can see, a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, et cetera. Now, while we're on the screen, if you ever wanna save a preset in, it's really straightforward. All you're gonna do is tune to whatever station you want to. And we can tune by pushing plus or minus there. We've got our pad along the top there. If we wanna just type in a station, We've got that flexibility, or we can press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel if we wanted to change stations that way instead. But here or there, once you've tuned to the station you want to save, all we're gonna do is just press and hold. And as you can see there, presets now saved. And it's that simple to do it, but doing a quick audio test. That is like half volume. It is incredible. And this isn't even the upgraded sound system that's available inside of this thing. So nice sound inside of the Edge default with some pretty good options as we get into some of the higher trims of the vehicle as well. Moving back along the very top there. And actually while we're, you know what I'm gonna do while we're on radio, I'm gonna show you a few other things. So we push this little button along the very top that brings us back to all of our radio information there. Close down, we can jump into Sirius XM instead. Sirius XM gives us a series of other options. So we can go a fuller screen there, which stretches us along the bottom for all of our presets. And we've got a few other things. So we've got our notification, so we can add in. So whether or not we get a notification when either the song or the artist comes on, we can manage or close down from there. We can search this way as well. So if we wanted to browse all of our different channels, we've got the flexibility to do it. We can browse for you and then all of our different categories there as well. We can press this little button there and that's gonna get us into our Sirius XM info now. So that one is actually dynamic. It's either gonna be the radio or Sirius XM. So you can see there, no active subscriptions. When you purchase a new Ford vehicle, you've got three months of included service for Sirius XM. If you've got an existing Sirius XM subscription, all you're gonna do, we've got our help and support. We've got all of our basic information there. We can call Sirius XM in order to transfer our subscription out if we want to. We can personalize it a bit so we can create different listeners, which is kind of neat. So one of the benefits of creating listeners is that it would have all of your individual listener history, your favorites and things like that, tied into this user profile, which is amazing. We've got different listener settings. We can block explicit content. We've got our tune to start and all of our different history. And then jumping into our help and support there again. But I wanna show you, so that's Sirius XM. If we change back to FM for a second, launch back up, and you can see it's now a radio button instead. So it is a dynamic button, which is kind of neat. But that's the basics for the radio. As you can see there, 30 individual presets when we update. We can seek that way if we want to, plus or minus as I mentioned earlier. But hopping back inside here, next up we've got our phone. So currently as of right now, no phones are connected. So let's start off on the iPhone side of things. First things first, we're gonna make sure that our Bluetooth is turned on on our phone. And once it is, we're just gonna hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. We're selecting Ford Confirm Edge. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. 
pin numbers match up, which is great. Now it's asking, do I want to allow my contacts and favorites to sync up? So for this one, I'm going to say, okay, we can delete that easy enough later on. For your and safety, we're connected. Please stay alert to change in road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. All right. So a few other things pop up now on my phone. It's saying that I was asking, do I want to allow uh, CarPlay with the Ford Edge? So we can say not now or use CarPlay. So a few options. We're going to hit use CarPlay there. And it's asking 911 assist. So do we want to add this one in? And one of the benefits there, so you can see it there. So if you're ever in a significant crash, it's going to automatically dial 911 for you, which is fantastic. One other thing to note is that if your phone is not currently connected over Bluetooth, but as long as Bluetooth is turned on, the vehicle will attempt to reconnect to that device if there's an accident, a significant crash. So just make sure whenever you're in your car, make sure you're connected over, uh, over Bluetooth there. Hitting finish and supports Apple CarPlay. So we're just going to enable. It's connecting to CarPlay and three, two, one, we are fully connected and it's that simple to be able to do it. So as you can see there, we've got Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps, we've got Waze, we can use all of these things directly through this middle screen and it looks nice. Now, it's not complete full screen, because as you can see there, we can push this little button along the top to make it go a little bit further up, which is kind of nice, but that's really as full screen as it's gonna get. But even still, that is still really nice that it stretches across the entire side there. But along the bottom tray, you can see there, we've got our maps, we've got my podcasts, we've also got our phone there as well. We can push our little hamburger icon along the bottom there to come to this option instead. And again, it's just our base home screen, so we can kind of swipe across. We've got our map there, we've got stations, parking, we've got our calendar, and then we've also got our podcast there. We can kind of play and pause as necessary there. We swipe across to get to a few options, but it's really straightforward using this. Like we can hop into our Apple Music if we want to, we can jump back, press the back button there. We can jump into our podcasts. We can browse, we can look at our library, tons of different options and hopping back again to the main screen. Same idea with audiobooks. Like it is really simple moving through this screen. A few things to note, not every app will work directly through this middle screen. So unfortunately, YouTube won't work right through the screen here. So we can't play video or anything like that, unfortunately. Uh, a few other ones I can think of, Spotify won't work over Apple CarPlay. You do have to just be connected over Bluetooth in order to make that happen. But it still is nice that we've got the flexibility to adjust and to connect here. And one cool thing is that we can also go to the general settings on our phone. We go to CarPlay. We just select our vehicle there. We can forget the car. We can toggle CarPlay on or off. So that's one thing to note is that let's say for whatever reason your vehicle is not working connecting to CarPlay, just log in there and make sure that CarPlay is enabled. If for whatever reason it's not, remove your phone from the vehicle and then reconnect it as well. It's really straightforward. And then we can customize. This is the big thing. So customizing, like let's say if you're a big fan of Google Maps and you want to also listen to your audiobooks, we can update that very, very simply. We can also remove things by hitting remove, delete. It saves it along the very bottom tray as well. So it removed audiobooks right from the screen completely. We can do a reset if we want to, and that's gonna bring this whole screen back to its factory default instead. So the way that everything was set up, but you've at least got the flexibility to be able to adjust that very simply, which is nice. We push the button along the very top there. We've got our phone, so we can drop down here to disable CarPlay, or we can reconnect to our Bluetooth instead. So we're gonna go reconnect to Bluetooth. That's gonna kick us off a of CarPlay. Perfect. We can hop in to the phone there. We can reconnect to CarPlay or look at some phone settings. So we've got the option of managing contacts if we want to. So we can download our contacts. We can have it sort different options. Moving down, we've got options for messaging and we can also remove it. So very, very straightforward in order to be able to set up an iPhone to the vehicle. I love how simple Ford's, oh, I love the climate settings. We'll get to you in a second, fella. But I love how simple this is. And obviously CarPlay, because I've disabled it, is not active there. We can hit phone list to jump back into the screen. And then we would just reconnect to Apple CarPlay that way. But it's that simple setting up Apple CarPlay inside of the Ford Edge. Next up, setting up an Android device. Exact same process and it's really straightforward. So let's say for whatever reason you're not on the screen, so let's kind of back out. And let's say if we've, we're on our radio screen. So you saw it earlier, it's straightforward. We can hit our phone along the very bottom. We can hit the car icon there instead. And we just go add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. We've got our Ford Edge, so we're going to connect there. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. 
For your safety, please stay alert to change in road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. And we're fully connected. Now it is also asking, do we want to allow contacts and access to our contacts? Yeah, let's allow that. Allow, allow, perfect, and we're connected. Now it's also saying that the device supports Android Auto. So wireless again, which is amazing. So in order to use this, we're just gonna hit enable there. Connecting to Android Auto. Look at this. We can exit out, exit setup, or we can continue. And three, two, one. Oh, okay. So this is cool. That is so cool and also new. So you've got the flexibility now of using Waze through Android Auto, which is amazing. This wasn't available before, so it is kind of nice to know that we can use Waze. We've got to set up our account through Waze in order to be able to use it, but we still have the flexibility to use Waze through Android Auto now, which is fantastic. We've also got our map icon along the very top, so you can use Google Maps without having to worry about any other options there, but we can easily search. We can look along the very bottom there for settings, traffic, guidance options, and things like that. And then searching, like it's so, so straightforward. So let's say if we wanted to, we could search through, start typing in an address, back, back. Let's go Old Faithful, 570 Kingston Road, perfect. And from there you can see, we've got all of our different routes that are available. So we've got the two different route options there. We can increase that way. We can turn off our notifications. We can change our map view there as well. So we've got a few different options available there. And then once we've got the route that we'd like to take, press. Head west toward Fairport Road. And there we go. So as you can see there, really straightforward. It does play over our audio system there as well, which is fantastic. And then we can just press the X button there if we want to cancel the route out again. So very, very straightforward to use this. And very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, a few other options. We've got our button there, which is going to bring us back to the Android Auto home screen. We can button press here in order to get into our podcasts. Back there, we can either skip, play, pause, etc. We've also got the flexibility of going, ooh, wrong button. Uh -huh. Perfect. Oh, uh, let's go to Android Auto. Wrong button. Uh -huh. There we go. Okay. So we've also got back into Android Auto again. We've got our music along the very bottom there. So media suggestions. We've also got our notification center and then our Google Assistant. And that's actually something I missed on the Apple CarPlay side of things. So we've got the Siri Assistant we can use on Apple, Google Assistant on the Google side. We can press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to launch into our Google or our Siri Assistant. And one cool thing is that we can, it's essentially a long button press in order to get to that setting or we just do a quick one in order to get into our base sync four screen instead. So we've got a few options that are available there. We can go one way or the other. Now, very similar to the iPhone side of things, we do have the flexibility to do some things with Android Auto. So if we just search for Android Auto on our phone, we go to our settings, we can see our previously connected cars, we can customize the launcher. Uh, one thing on the launcher is that whatever changes we make here, like let's say if we wanna drag our podcast to the top, we can do it. We just have to restart Android Auto in order for the changes to take into effect. So we can customize the screen if we want to. We just have to essentially shut this down and relaunch it for those changes to happen. We've got our day night mode. We've got our Google Assistant driver seat location. Our driver seat location is kind of neat. We've also got wireless Android Auto that we can toggle off if we want to. So it is kind of nice. We've at least got a little bit of flexibility customizing the Android Auto side of things if we want to. As I mentioned, button press there to get back to the main screen and then back and forth again there. So it is nice that we've got so many options. I do love that we've got Waze though, which is kind of neat. And then, like I said, we've got our options for different maps and things like that, which, I mean, it is nice. So we've got factory navigation, but if you want to rely on one of these other map applications, we can. And then removing phones from the vehicle, straightforward. So we hop here. We've got the iPhone that was previously connected and the Samsung that was connected as well. So we can look at our settings. And one thing that's new is we've now got the option of setting this thing as a favorite device. One of the benefits there is that if both phones are connected to the vehicle, it's who gets connection priority. So you've got a few options available. And then we can just remove. It's removed it. Really straightforward. So as you can see there, completely remove the Samsung from the vehicle. And then same idea on the iPhone side of things. If we want to do that, we just hit remove, remove. Three, two, one. And both phones are now connected. So it's that simple setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of the Ford Edge. All right, next up, we've got some vehicle settings. Quite a few options available here as well. 
So vehicle settings, we've got a rear occupant alert. So as we go to drive, we stop the vehicle and turn it off. We're gonna get a notification on screen, like next to know to check the back seats. We've got our serial number, our keypad code. So we do have the flexibility through our keypad code to enter in a five digit number if we wanted to. And one of the benefits of entering a five digit number is that we can access the vehicle without having our key fob on us. Rear view camera delay is an option there as well. And moving into our general settings. So we can go English, Spanish, French, I believe. Yeah, our three options. We can change it to kilometers or miles, Celsius or Fahrenheit. The beeping that we're getting there, we can turn it off if we want to. We can also submit feedback to Ford as well if there's any issues that you're getting through this screen. And then we can also do a factory reset. So we can factory reset Ford Pass if we want to or do a full master reset. Ford Pass, we can reset the vehicle hotspot or everything. So we do have the flexibility of being able to remote start and things like that directly through our cell phone if we wanted to. And then we can just do a reset if we ever need to, if we're ever having issues there. We've got options for our display. So as big, as bright as this display is, if you find it to be a bit too much, we can turn it into this calming screen instead. Button press to bring it back to life again. Hopping back inside to our display, we can adjust the brightness from the inside here. And we've got a few different modes. So as of right now, it's technically in the light mode, but we can have it permanently lock onto the light or the daytime mode. Oh, I actually just noticed it turns on the headlights there as well when we're in the dark mode. That's kind of neat. Oh, that's really neat, but I love it. So we've got a few different options that are available there as well. Your choice, whether you let the vehicle determine if it's in the light or the day mode, depending on the brightness. We've got our clock settings, so we can adjust hours, minutes, AM, PM. We can go that 24 hours to so the military time instead, and we can have it auto update for our time as well. So auto time update, just based off of our GPS location. Connectivity, so we've got a few options available there. So connected vehicle features, we can turn the whole thing off. We can share vehicle data, yes, no, vehicle analytics. And we can also toggle Sirius XM off there as well. One thing to note, Sirius XM with our travel link, unfortunately is not available in Sync 4. So the traffic, weather, things like that are all done directly through this middle screen now instead. We just have to make sure we've got that service enabled. So we do have three, either three months or three years of connected service. It's gonna be a matter of which version of the vehicle you've gone for. From there, we've got our Bluetooth options. So we can toggle Bluetooth on off, or we can also change the name of the vehicle if we want to. Let's hide these ones. We've got our wireless app projection, so we can change up the network names, passwords, and things like that. We've got our Wi-Fi networks as well. So we can easily toggle Wi-Fi off, which gets rid of Wi-Fi along the top, and we can also connect to an available network. So I definitely recommend make sure you connect to a network at home because it's automatically going to be able to download system updates for us as well. And we can even schedule when the updates get installed. So if you know you're not going to be using your vehicle at 2 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday, you've got the flexibility to do that. So you can select whatever time is going to happen for our scheduled updates. So we've got that as, available, as an available option. I do recommend turning the system updates on because it makes sure that your vehicle is up to its current software version. So definitely recommend you do that one. We've got our vehicle hotspot. So the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem and you can use that for up to 10 devices. We do need a data only plan in order to be able to use it. And for, I love that they've done this. Help getting started, it tells you exactly what you need to do in order to set this thing up as well, which is fantastic. We can see our data usage, which we don't have anything because we don't have the service set up as of yet. We've got options so we can set some things up. We can edit out all of our passwords and our network names, etc. And then we can manage devices. So if we do have our data plan connected, so we would have the flexibility of blocking devices if we wanted to, we can manage all of our connected devices on top of that briefly touched on our system updates there as well. Next up, we've got our mobile apps, a series of other options that are available there. 911 assist, I did recommend, I did tell you to make sure you keep that one on. So you do have to make sure your phone's connected over Bluetooth, but we can toggle the whole system on off there if we want to. We've got our Ford Assistant there as well. And one of the cool things there is that we've got so many different options that are available for what we can do. So we could press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel if we wanted to, or we could have it listen for a wake word. We can set our preferred wake word as well. So rather than pressing that steering wheel command prompt, we can just say, okay, Ford. And we'd be able to change songs, radio stations. We can change the temperature there as well. We can go through the command list here to see exactly what we can say. So it is neat that we've got that as an available option. So if you want to familiarize yourself with this, I, I definitely recommend it because it is neat what you can do with your voice inside of this thing instead. Advanced mode means we won't get as many notifications. So we go to change radio stations. It's just gonna do it rather than letting us know that it's doing it. Phone confirmation, and then we've got our command list. So we've got our command list there. So whether or not that one shows up is gonna be a matter of preference. 
valet mode, what that's going to do is we enter in a four digit number there and that's going to lock the screen out with the exception of the climate control. So valet drivers can't look through previous destinations, contacts, etc. So we've got the flexibility of being able to do that if we want to. And that's everything about the base settings screen there. Next up, we've got our little hamburger icon along the very top. So this little button gives us a ton of other options now. We've got our radio, which we saw earlier. That gives us our base radio, so AM, FM, Sirius XM. If we had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up as an available option. If we had our phone still connected, that would show up as an available source there as well. So it is kind of nice that we've got that as an option there. Button press, we've got our phone, which we saw earlier. No phones currently connected right now. And you can also see as I press different buttons, it also updates, hey, watch this, on the bottom there. So it pushes along the very bottom tray. So I want to show you something. We go to this split screen instead, so we can kind of jump in between. So these are all of our recently selected, essentially, options. So we could, if we want to, select it in order to swipe up, or we can just swipe up, and it's going to launch that screen instead. So we've got that option. And as I mentioned, we can go a fuller screen to have it just along the bottom tray there instead. But let's dive into our factory navigation now. So starting off, we've got a, well, quite a few options. Searching for addresses is very straightforward, so we've got the option of looking for our home or work address. We can look at recents, we looked at our saved options, we've got fuel prices, dynamic pricing, trips, search tools, so many different options. One of the cool things is that we could search by address if we want to that way. We can also search by GPS coordinates. So we've got quite a few different options that are available there. It's just going to be a matter of personal preference. Do you have the address, not have the address, etc. Where? So it's predictive. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. Just have to type in a few more letters in order for it to recognize the address. So it's launching in, and here we go. So we can now save it as a favorite if we want to. No traffic or alerts available as of right now. And we've also got our parking. We can see if there's fuel nearby or any other places that might be nearby the destination. So quite a few options available. Jumping back. This. Oh, that's a little bug. All right. So just make sure you actually hit the address first. Okay, perfect. Saved and recent. That's good. All right, so more that should bring us back to the screen instead. Here nor there. We've got vehicle range based off of our current fuel, routing preferences as well. So we've got our faster time, we can avoid certain things, etc. We'll show, I'll show you that one in a second. So let's just select the address. We can add in desti different destinations if we want to. We can save, we can go. Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. So it tells us where we need to go. Please we can swipe to highlighted route. Don't mind if I do. So we've got our trip overview along the side. We can button press there to hide the screen. Press this to bring it back again. We can press the X button if we want to, so we can delete the entire route, parts of the route, etc. So it is kind of nice because we've got the flexibility of adjusting and adding waypoints if we're taking multiple addresses or we're going taking multiple stops. And then, because we saved an address, or we looked at an address recently, it's saved again. We can button press to go to that one, save it as a favorite, and a few other good options. So now if we go to root settings, we can have our guidance prompts, strictly voice or strictly tone. We've got different views, auto zoom during guidance, so it's going to either zoom in or pull out, depending on how close it is, <laughs> pull out, depending on how close it is to finishing up the route. We can avoid certain things as well. So if we wanted to avoid U-turns, tolls, ferries, fees, sort, all sorts of things are available there. And moving back, we've got our either fastest, shortest, or the most eco-friendly route. Different things that we can avoid. We can customize our avoidances there as well. And then we've got our simulators there. And back out to the main screen. And we can just cancel out there again. Button press brings this menu back. We can change it out to different views there by pushing this little button along the very top. And one thing there, so this little button is grayed out, and the reason why is because we don't have an address set up. So I want to show you something. Let's look at our recents again. Go back to the address here. Go. And watch this. So now we can push that button in order to look at our full route. We can look at the endpoint or back again. We can rotate a few different ways as well if we want to. This is kind of neat. Button press again there in order to be able to cancel the route. So it's very straightforward in order to be able to use the navigation inside of this thing. Along the very bottom, we've got this, which is going to let us know. So we've got exit services, traffic and alerts, parking, weather, things like that. A series of different options for setting as well. So we've got our notifications, traffic data, and things like that. Now, one thing you may have noticed, certain things are currently grayed out. So weather's grayed out and a few other things. So you do actually need to make sure that your vehicle is fully connected in order for these things to actually work. So as I mentioned, three months of service inside of the base versions of the vehicle with the option of a three-year, depending on which version of the vehicle that we're in. 
And from there, we've got our current direction. So we, oh, it's kind of neat. So we can also see our elevation. We've got our location, travel distance, etc. Hitting this button gives us all of our GPS coordinates, current street info, drive. Oh, this is kind of neat. Let's us know. Oh, cool. We've got options for different hospitals. So if we want to find essentially a different point of, uh, point of interest icons, or point of interest, I should say, we've got the flexibility to do it. We've got our current elevation along the bottom right as well. But as I said, really straightforward in order to be able to use this thing. Next up, we've got options for media. So I mentioned it earlier, we do have a few different options for media. So we've got AM, FM, Sirius XM. We can add in multiple devices if we want to. Button press there again. We can launch into Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. We've got a fully digital owner's manual there as well. Perfect. So we've got categories, visual searches, and a few other things. So one of the big benefits there is, oh, let's say if you maybe are having some sort of weird messages pop up in your dash, you can look through based off of a visual search, bookmarks, categories, and things like that. Button press there, and we've got a few different games available. That's neat. What? There are so many options available. We've got a lane change. It's like a race game. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, no way. Oh, no way. Okay, that's cool. That is kind of cool that we've got that option. Oh, chaos. That is really neat. So it's just like dragging your finger in order to be able to, oh, that is so cool. So we've got some games that we can now play if we are stopped. And that's the key word, is that if we're stopped. So if you're driving, you're not going to be able to use the games as the driver, obviously. But it is nice that that's available as an option. And then we've got a series of... Oh, we've got Sudoku! Oh, <laughs> I love me my Sudoku. Oh, that's cool. But it doesn't look... Okay, so it looks like it's probably just a new game about... Yeah, so it looks like it's just like a base, like an easy beginner one. It doesn't look like there are more difficult levels available. Should be kind of there as an option. But it is nice. We've got Sudoku. We've got so many other games that are available inside of this thing now. It's kind of neat. Good job, Ford. It's kind of neat because I know that people were complaining that there weren't options for this screen. So Ford's kind of listened to that and they're at least introducing a few options that are available, which is kind of nice. But I mean, obviously wouldn't be able to use it as the driver if you're driving the vehicle for obvious reasons. But moving back there, as I showed you earlier, a few options available. And that's everything in this base screen popping up. We can now go to a few other options that are available there. Let's jump into our maps again. That's really it. We've got our settings again, which again gives us a few options. We jump into our settings icon there. Go to our map. Oh, this is actually something I didn't cover off. Perfect. Let's go through our navigation settings. So we've got our map and vehicle. So we've got our different map views, map layers, and we can look at our installed maps. Oh, installed maps. So we can see exactly what map we're currently using. Back again. Different options for guidance. So we've got our voice command prompts. Do we want to have views? So zooming in as we get closer to an upcoming turn. We can avoid certain things, custom avoidances, etc. Different options for searching, options for traffic, so we can turn on our traffic alerts, etc. Notifications, we can also adjust all of these notifications. So when we've got a hill coming up, finding parking, range warnings, so as we're running out of gas, it's going to let us know. So quite a few different options available for notification, and then user data, we can clear all of our trips, export our data, etc. And we've got our basic about information there as well. So, so many options available in the screen. And I showed you earlier, we can kind of swipe across there. We can button press in order to launch into different screens as well, which is kind of nice. But that's the basics of the screen with the exception now of climate control. And climate control, so this was introduced with the Sync 4 screen. So rather than having tactile buttons down here, everything's built into the screen instead. So we are dual zone climate control inside of this thing. So we've got that flexibility if we want to, different for the driver versus passenger side. We do also have our auto mode, so we can let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be. You can adjust it manually yourself there as well if you want. Now one cool thing is that all of these things will eventually go away. So watch this. Three, two, one. Haha, -ha, down it goes. And same idea, so we've got a few different things as well. This, I love the look of this now. So we can turn our heated steering wheel on off there max air conditioning, air circulation, and then we can have this going to our windshield face or feet, and it all is, it's done through this nice animation instead. We are technically dual zone right now because it's different for the driver than it is for the passenger side, but one of the cool things is that we've also got the flexibility of, wait until this goes away, or I can button press there. So if I hit dual, it's going to default the passenger to whatever the driver's side is. Can turn our heated seats on there as well, heated steering wheel there, 
We've got our fan control, max windshield defroster, rear window defroster on top of that. So quite a few different options that are available, but that's everything that you need to know about the Sync 4 media screen inside of the Ford Edge. So that was pretty neat. I love that we've got some new games. So it's like Ford is absolutely listening to customers because I know people have been asking for that flexibility. I think the one thing that they've got to do now is also introduce the flexibility of watching video when the car is parked. I think that would be an amazing option. Not available as a factory default as of right now, but I would be kind of neat to see. But that was a full look at the Sync 4 media screen. And I know lots of things that I covered off. But if you have any questions, ran in any problems, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, take care.